Hello everyone and welcome to another Intro to Signal Analysis video. Today's video topic is discrete time systems and we'll see a couple examples of those. We can think of a discrete time system as a system, a box of some sort, that takes an input sequence x of n, so a sequence of numbers x of n, does something to those numbers and then puts out an output sequence y of n. So today we're going to see two examples of um, definitions of systems that do this, and we're going to calculate the outputs of those systems for a given input. So let's get going. Okay, so example one, the first system that we'll consider is y of n is equal to x of n times cosine of 2 pi over 4n. Okay, so this system takes the input sequence and multiplies it by cosine 2 pi over 4n. Um, so what does this system do? Well, it's we'd call it a modulator because it's multiplying the input sequence by a cosine. Okay, so now what we'd like to do, just to see an example of how this system works, is to calculate the output when the input is x of n, um, where I've sketched x of n here. So x of n is a sequence that's equal to 0 for n less than 0. It goes, All the zeros go all the way back here. And then it, it switches to 1 starting at 0, and it's 1s forever after that. And so this is what's known as a unit step sequence. Okay, the sequence that is 0 for n less than 0 and 1 for all the n values greater than 0. So now we can calculate the output of this system when this is the input. And in order to do that, well, what do we do? Well, we just have to multiply at each time point. We multiply the input by the cosine 2 pi over 4n which obviously we can reduce this to cosine pi over 2n, okay? Just multiplying through there the 2 pi by over 1 fourth, or 2 pi divided by 4. All right, so if we're doing that, with the, the system multiplies the input by this cosine, well, wherever the input is 0, obviously the output will be 0. So we can automatically say that the output is going to be 0 for all n less than 0. Um, so if I just start doing a sketch of the output, y of n, then we know for sure it's going to be 0 before n equals 0. So. Um, this is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, etc. And it's staying um, 0 for all the values of n less than 0. So let's start figuring out what, what's going on at um, time 0. So at time 0, we're going to um, multiply 1, that's the value at 0 of the input, by cosine of pi over 2 times 0. Well, cosine of 0 is 1, so we'll just get 1 at time 0. And then at time 1, what do we get? So at, um, well, let me summarize what we got at n equals 0. At n equals 0, we got y of 0 is equal to x of 0 um, cosine of pi over 2 times 0 and that is equal to 1. At n equal 1, we get y of 1 is x of 1 cosine pi over 2 times 1. Well, what's the cosine of pi over 2? Well, that's 0. Um, so even though x is equal to 1, um, this term is equal to 0, so we get 0. Similarly, n equal 2, y of 2 is equal to x of 2, which is 1, times cosine pi over 2 times 2. Well, this is cosine of pi, which is minus 1. So the overall result will be minus 1. Similarly, at n equal 3, we can show y of, zero, y of 3 sorry, is going to be, well, let's see, what will it be? It'll be 
um, x of 3 times cosine of 3 pi over 2, um, which obviously cosine 3 pi over 2 is 0, so that's 0. And then n equal 4, um, we have uh, y of 4 is equal to um, 1 times cosine of um, pi over 2 times 4, or cosine of 2 pi, so that'll be back at 1. And then it's periodic after that, right? It's just we're going to continue cycling through the values of the cosine. Um, so we can sketch this up here. So we went from 1 to 0 to minus 1 at 2, and then back to 0 at 3, and then uh, 1 at 4. And we just continue, you know, it continues periodically outside of that. So it's going uh, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, etc. So that is what the output will look like. So this was a pretty simple system to work with. It actually took longer to write out than it actually took to do the calculations. Um, so that's one example of a discrete time system. Let's see another. Okay, here's our second system. This system um, takes the input, uh, so the output y of n is going to be a third times x of n plus x of n minus 1 plus x of n minus 2. So what is this system really doing? Well, it's calculating an average of three values here, right? So an average of the current output, or the current input, sorry, because it's at time n, with the two previous inputs. Um, and so this system is a three-point moving average. That's what we would say that it does. Okay, and now we want to calculate the output when the input is our unit step sequence that we considered in the last example. Okay, well, if we're calculating an average, then if the input's zero and has been zero forever, um, we're just going to get zero. So we can do a sketch of the output. So we're sketching the output, y of n. And we know that the output has to be zero before anything comes in. So um, we're getting all zeros over here. So at minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, etc. It's just equal to 0 because nothing's come in yet. Now at, at 0, at 0, so y of 0 is equal to 1 third, now I'm just going to substitute in x of 0 plus x of minus 1 plus x of minus 2. Um, so I just substituted into this equation, I'm just substituting in n equals 0, and that's how I got this. So at, at time 0, the output is going to be this. Well, what is x of minus 1 and what are x of minus 1 and x of minus 2? Well, they're 0, right? They're over here. So the only non-zero value is x of 0, and that's equal to 1. So this will just be 1 third times 1, which is just a third. Okay. Then we move over to y of 1, and I'll just write out another one here, x of 1 plus x of, minus, of 0, sorry, plus x of minus 1. Well now, there are two non-zero values in here. These are non-zero, that's 0. So we just add up the two non-zero values, which are both 1, and we get 2. Um, so my overall is 2 thirds. And then y of 2, it's just going to be one more point here. So x of 2 plus x of 1 plus x of 0. Now all three points in here are going to be non-zero. They're each equal to 1, so 1 plus 1 plus 1. So it'll be 3 times a third, which will be 1. Okay, now we can go move to the just the next point over. Let's think about that. So at y of 3... Now y of 3 we're going to be averaging, right? What we're doing here is we're taking the average of the current input with the two previous inputs. So y of 3, well, now they're all equal to 1, so we're going to get the same value as here. So y of 3 
is going to be equal to 1, and it's pretty easy to see that forever on out, we're just going to get 1. Because the moving average, the average of the three most recent points coming in, um, are, since they're all the same, once we get over here, um, it's equal to 1. So, um, so we can just sketch in our results here. At 0, we got 1 third. So that's a third. At 1, we got 2 thirds. And at 2, we got 1. And then we'll get 1 forever from that point forward. So we'll keep getting 1s for the, this particular input to the moving average. Okay, so this was a pretty simple system to work out. Um, we get um, a pretty straightforward output. Now we're going to continue talking about these systems the next few weeks, and we'll find other ways to calculate their outputs um, for generic inputs rather than just going step by step and, and calculating each, out, um, each output value individually. So I encourage you to keep listening and uh, keep studying signal analysis. So that brings us to the end of our video. This video was made for the ECE 201 course at George Mason University. Um, if you want to know more about Mason or the Volgenau School of Engineering, the ECE department, or me, you can check out these websites. Thanks for listening.